we're going to look at a little interesting problem here where you, um, you've got something like leaned up against the wall. Like, so I've just got this uh, meter stick leaned up here and you can see that it's, it's just sitting still. If I move this, if I slide this out a little bit, you can see it's still able to kind of hang out there leaning against the wall. Um, you'll get to a point if you move out far enough, um, here you can see that it's still holding. Um, as I keep shrinking this angle, you'll see that we get to a point where eventually it won't be able to stay, right? So the thing just falls down, right? If you try to lean it, lean something against the wall like this, you don't have much hope of keeping it there. You know, so if you really want to be sure that it's going to stay, you want to kind of put it way up like this. So what we're going to do is um, look for how you would go about finding, say, the angle that you could, um, the, the smallest angle, let's say, that you can get away with um, setting something up such that it won't slip. Okay, so like here's okay. If I go back here, it's gone. Okay, so we're going to take a look at, at how to handle that. Um, so if you go in the, um, if you're working for my notes, it's on page 239. Um, otherwise, you can just draw a little picture of it. And this, this problem is kind of a classic in, in uh, physics, like kind of freshman college physics. Um, and the idea is you have a, a reasonably rough floor. Actually, 0.6 is sort of slippery-ish, but that's okay. Um, so you have, a, you have the floor with a certain coefficient of friction. And then the wall you just take to be smooth. So, or you could say there's like a wheel on that end of the ladder. Okay, so we're, just to keep life simple, we'll not have the wall kind of contributing um, friction. Um, and so what we want to do is find the smallest angle such that the ladder's not going to tip over. And so as you might imagine, the way that you want to start with something like this is you, you got to draw in the forces that are present in the problem. So, um, so let's just go with this. Well, coming from the floor, obviously the floor's got to push up on this thing. Um, so there's going to be like a normal force from the floor. Um, I'm just going to call that like NF for normal force from the floor. Um, there's got to be some kind of a friction force um, because otherwise, right, the ladder's just going to like slip away. Um, so there's got to be a friction force going back this way. So static friction, we've been calling it like F sub S. Um, and if we're looking at the very brink when it's just about to slip, that means we're maximizing um, friction. Um, so the friction force will be uh, then equal to coefficient of friction times normal force as opposed to like less than. Um, coefficient of friction times normal force. So there's that, uh, those forces. Um, what else? Well, gravity is going to act on this ladder, right? It doesn't really care what we're doing. Um, and we'll treat it as a uniform ladder. So that's going to be pulling down here in the center. Um, we'll call that mg. So mg pulling downward. Um, and then where it's in contact with the wall, the wall's got to kind of push out. So there's going to be a normal force from the wall. Call that NW for N wall. Um, if the wall's smooth, then there's not going to be any force like along the wall, um, a friction force along the wall. We've kind of written it into the problem or baked it in that, there, that it's frictionless, so there's not going to be a component of force um, along the wall. Um, so this is it. Um, and so what we want to try to figure out is, again, what angle we can get this to, uh, what's the smallest angle we can have here before this thing just um, slides away. Um, well, one thing you can do before you get going here is knowing that the ladder is not moving or we're on the brink of it slipping. So a couple things are true. Since it's static, um, one thing we know is that the sum of the forces of all the forces equals zero. Okay. So what you can do, just kind of staring at the picture, um, one thing that we can see then is the upward force from the floor has to just be uh, balancing the downward force from the weight of the ladder. So, so from that, um, a couple things that we can see from that, the, the vertical force is balanced. So the normal force from the floor is just equal to mg. And then likewise, we know that that's from the vertical forces. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll even write that, say vert, from the vertical forces. And then the horizontal forces, those guys are going to balance too. So the wall is pushing out. Well, this force must be equal and opposite. Um, so the normal force from the wall then has to be um, mu s n. So equal to the friction force. Um, mu s n f, I should say. We have to make that distinction. Okay. And so that's what we can learn from the forces. Um, 
The other thing we know, because it's if it's not, uh, not only is it not translating through space, but it's not rotating. Um, so then we also know that the sum of the torques need to be zero. Um, now there's choices here with where you can put the axis of rotation, because it's not rotating about any axis, no matter where you put it. Okay, um, and so there's a few different ways to play with this. Um, what I'm going to do is just put the axis like right here on the on the floor, right there. So I'm going to I'm going to choose to put my axis here. And so then what that means is if I sum the torques, these two forces are not going to be at play because they're right on the axis anyway. So we don't have to worry about them. Okay. So really, there's just going to be two forces making torques. So Effectively, what we have is some torque from mg and some torque from the normal force of the wall. Those guys are going to conspire to make zero, okay? Um, so let's go for it. So we need to get the torque from uh, mg, okay? A um, couple ways to see this guy. So, well, first of all, let's get the sign. Uh, mg pulling this way, well, that would tend to, if the thing's pegged here, mg would tend to make a, a clockwise rotation. Um, so that's going to be a negative torque. So we'll say negative. And then um, there's a few different ways to see this. Um, what I'm going to do is use the um, uh, fr perp version of torque. So you notice if you extend the line of mg down like this, I'm going to use the full mg. But then the effective distance for mg is not this, but this, this little bit, okay? So if we call the ladder L, let's maybe make that up for the ladder, well, it, the entire ladder, we'll just call it L, then this length is L over 2 right here, right? No kidding, right? It's half the ladder. Um, well, then what that would do is make this length, sorry for the... Uh, cluttery picture, but I'm going to put it in there. That's going to be L over 2 times cosine. You're going to, you're going to project that down and take the cosine of that angle. L over 2 cosine theta. Um, so it's going to be minus mg L over 2 uh, cosine theta, force times distance. Um, and then we need the torque from the wall. Well, that's got to be positive because that, if you peg it at the wall, the wall is going to make it go around like this. Um, right? So then um, we need to get the torque that the wall provides, okay? And uh, likewise, we, um, we can think about that a couple different ways. You can either peel off the part of the force of the wall that kind of um, goes, like, goes like this, um, or you could extend the line of the force of the wall and get this, this length. Um, the length that goes up here. Okay, so you can kind of um, uh, visualize that, I guess, either way. So let's go with, um, here's, we'll use the full force, so the normal force of the wall, but the effective distance is not this full length, but really only this length. Um, so this length here is going to be L times sine of theta. Why sine? Because it's on the opposite side of the triangle. So this is the effective length for n wall. Um, so you get uh, n wall um, times L sine theta. Okay, and those those need to conspire to make zero together. Um, so the, so in other words, since these two things make zero, they're equal to each other. So if you basically bring this to the other side, we have normal force of the wall times L sine theta equals um, mg L over 2 cos theta. Okay, so now we got to do a little bit of simplifying some things. Um, let's see. Oh, normal force of the wall. That's going to be mu s times normal force of the floor. So that's mu s times normal force of the floor is just mg. So, no, so the normal force of the wall is mu s mg. So let's plug that in. So we have mu s mg. L sine theta, that's substituting in for normal force of the wall, uh, equals mg L over 2 cos theta. Um, well, now let's just solve for what we're supposed to get the uh, angle. And so if we 
cancel out the MGs on both sides. Looks like we can get rid of the Ls on both sides. Um, let's bring the cosine over so you get sine over cosine. Um, sine theta over cos theta equals, and then it looks like we can bring this over to the other side. It's going to be 1 over 2 mu sub s. But that's just tan theta. So therefore, what we learn is that tan theta equals 1 over 2 mu sub s. Um, so this angle just depends on what the coefficient of friction is with the floor. Um, so let's just figure out what it was for this problem. Um, mu s was 0.6. So it looks like we need to do 1 over 1.2. So we just need to take um, arc tangent of 1 over 1.2. So let's do that. Arc tan 1 divided by 1.2. So when I do that, I get uh, apparently 39.8 degrees. Um, so theta min is 39.8 degrees. Okay, so as long as you keep this angle bigger than that, it'll stay. Uh, but if you bring this guy down where it gets below 39.8, it's going to go clunk and hit, hit the ground. Um, so that's the um, kind of classic problem with uh, finding the minimum angle at which you can lean a ladder against the wall and have it stay up.